All right, you two this. EXO coming at you here with a little special. We are gonna be tuning up a system today, and not just anyone's system, but good old Steve's system right here. He's a local from... About 200 miles away. Oh my God, not so local, but you made the trip just for this little Iraqi alternator. We're selling it nice, so you're gonna have a multiple setup under here? Actually, it was Jason Seklar who was telling me about it. You can swing this one up. Put another one right here and kind of bracket them across. More juice for that sound system back here. Let's go ahead and take a look at her. Hell yeah, we're gonna be doing going through each and every amplifier, the RCAs, to make sure the head unit is clean, the amplifiers are clean. I can see some amp lab stickers. You're gonna be running some more stuff from them this season. Oh yes, all of my amplifiers come exclusively through them. Twisted sound, 6.5 HVs. Dual inputs, fucking big boys right there. And these are the level fives? Uh, level six M4 15s. Oh shit, these are level sixes? Holy Moses. Just started breaking in finally. So without further ado, let's go ahead and shut our mouths, bust out our equipment, and get this bad bitch tuned up nice. And here's the tool we're gonna be using. Even though it's kind of pricey, it has saved my ass so many times. I tune up all my systems with this device right here, the Scope 440 Plus. You can use something called the DSO Nano. They have other choices or an even analog unit like Fluke. All right, so we're gonna start everything up with where it all begins, which is our head unit. This is sending out two to four volts. Let's just say four volts for this video purposes. And it's all a matter of making sure that signal, that four volts stays nice and clean all the way back here. There's actually uh, three jacks on the back of the head unit itself. The ones for the four channel come directly from the head unit and the okay. ones from the bigger amps go through the uh, RCA line driver. Oh, there's a line driver. Yes. All right. We're going to have to go through that first. Oh boy, you did do some taping, didn't you? Yeah, I wanted to make <laughs> sure that the wires weren't flopping around everywhere and okay. catching on something potentially. What type of line driver do you have? This is a MT Audio universal bass knob. I don't know if it turns up the voltage or not. It should just be a pass through. I don't well, know yeah, we'll, we'll do it just to be safe. I have a feeling that it's, it's not gonna be a line driver. This might take a couple of minutes because I went overboard with it. That's right, dude, that's my middle name. I really went not for this dude. You did, dude, look at what you've done. <laughs> All right, grab some alligator clips here. The negative is always gonna go to the same place on your RCAs, not the probe, but the sheath around it right here. This little metal surround is what we're gonna connect to for the negative. And we'll do the same thing with our positive, but we're gonna connect that to the probe. Right, ah, oh, son of a Bitch. Everything's nice and protected with that plastic piece around the contacts. So set your O-scope to AC volts right there. We got 40 hertz all queued up here on repeat, and we're just gonna go ahead and use this frequency to do all of our tuning for our bass amplifiers. Everything is all set to AC volts. Let's turn the volume up a little bit, and we should see the frequency pop up. We are at four volts exactly and perfectly clean. See YouTube how it's very round at the top? That's a good illustration of a perfect sine wave. If it were to be distorted, it would be chopped off on the tops and the bottoms, creating what we call a saw wave. Pretty interesting. So go ahead and bring her back down. We now know from this quick little 20 second test that we can turn this head unit up all the way as far as this head unit is concerned thumbs up going back to the rcas so now let's put the base knob back in and then come and connect it to the outputs of that base knob which should be pretty much the same as what we just saw but we're going to make sure just in case should all be identical in a perfect world but who knows maybe we'll see something different go ahead and crank that volume sir Is that all the way up? Yep. All right, so we've actually lost a little bit. Can we, maybe it was on the fade out of the song. Go back. Three point nine. We were at four point zero something before. Signal is still clean, still looking good, but three point nine, three point eight nine volts. So you're losing a tenth of a volt for your from your bass knob, but it's still one hundred percent clean. So you don't really need to worry about that. Now we can go to the back. Let's plug in our ordinary RCAs back into this and we'll test the RCAs back there. Cause you never know along those long lengths, maybe one side doesn't work, who knows? Now, even though we just tested it from the output of our base knob, technically these should be the exact same, but you never know. Like we just mentioned, along those long lengths on the kick panel, going through hard turns and stuff, 
maybe one of these RCAs is faulting. You never know. So it's good to test both sides of it. Let's test the first RCA. Huh. Something's, all right, go ahead and bring that back down. Something's not right. We're not getting any signal out of this RCA. Let me see. Oh, what the fuck, dude. I, I am not gonna edit this out. I am gonna leave that in. It's not even, It's. it was stuck to your magnet. It was stuck to the magnet. It fucking got pulled off. That's hilarious. All right, let's try that again, shall we? Shit happens. All right, 40 hertz, 3.78 volts. So along the way, you've lost about another tenth on that long 20 foot run of RCA. Not bad, so let's do the other side and make sure we're at 3.76 or something very close to it. 40 hertz, 4.77, same exact as the other one. Perfect. So now let's go to the other amplifier and make sure it's the same damn thing. As you can see, our signal is clean as a baby's bottom. Well, maybe not a baby's bottom, that's pretty dirty. Ha! All right, on to the second set of RCAs, which is going into the second amplifier. We are at 40 hertz and 3.77, identical as the other 3.76. All looking good, my man. Let's go to the other one. 3.78, 3.7, 3 3.77, identical as the rest. Looking good, sir. So now, pretty, pretty decent there. So now we can go ahead and plug these back into the amplifiers because the input is taken care of. But since amps, all we care about is how much power they put out, the output is very crucial too. So we're gonna go over to our speaker terminals, which is conveniently right on this side, and measure the same exact type of voltage, AC volts coming out of these right here. Just like that, we're gonna clip them onto the, those little pieces of hardware to get our signal. Make sure it's only on the positive and negative. It doesn't matter which positive or which negative. It's a mono block amplifier. This is not a left and a right. It's all going to the same place. Both positive and negative all connected and safely separated with a good distance here because we're gonna be seeing a lot higher voltage than we were. Essentially what an amplifier is doing is taking four volts like we saw that 3.7 and transforming that into 60, 70, 80 volts. So that's why these subwoofers are able to move so much because of that power. We adjusted uh, the low pass in the subsonic, which was surprisingly not set optimally. We got the guy hooked up real good with the correct settings. The subsonic is now at 20 hertz. The low pass is now at 80 hertz. But we just want to make sure that everything is still dialed in right after those quick changes. We're going to go ahead and queue up 40 hertz again, sir and see what we are at. We're gonna slowly ramp up the volume and we'll see what the clipping looks like. Or maybe you'll be clean, who knows? We are at 40 hertz, registering good at, already at 12 volts, 13, 16, 20. We'll go up, oh, let's go up a little, still, still good, 50 volts. Still good. Okay, we've already seen a full clean signal at 50 volts. 70 volts. Okay, I can start to hear a little bit of clipping from your amp, so you hear that sound, YouTube? You hear that hiss? And see how it has that tiny bit of peaking right there? We are gonna start with taking our little adjusting tool, and what we're gonna do is to turn up or turn down the gains according to what the amplifier tells us to do. Go up slowly. Now you can start to hear a little bit of something, but the signal is looking fine. So we're gonna give it a little bit more. We're gonna give it full volume and then bring it to maximum potential. I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna lean over so I can see everything right along with you guys. And we're gonna go right up until it clips just a very tiny bit. Even though the amplifiers are hissing just a little tiny bit right now. All right, you see that? I don't, I'm gonna bring it down a tiny bit, a little bit below 87. Oh, that's the wrong way. See how it's cleaning up a tiny bit more that we're at 86, a little bit cleaner, but you can still see it has a little bit of spikiness. So we're gonna bring that down to 85, see what that does. It took away that little spike, still looking clean as hell, but there is the tiniest bit, tiniest bit of a soft clip at the top. I can see it with my eyes at 85 volts. So we're gonna keep it at 85 and do the other amplifier identically the same, identically. So we're gonna repeat this process for the 6.5K right next to it.
Pretty damn simple. All right, second amplifier is all plugged in with our gator clips and she's reading into the meter. So let's go ahead and slowly ramp her up with our test tones here. Still sounds a little high to me. Yep, 91. You can hear it with your ear. So let's go back and bring her down to 85 volts. We have the low pass all set for us and the uh, subsonic is all set. I'll try to get 85 exactly. 85.1, 85, 85 will do it. Oh, overshot just a little bit. It's crucial to make sure your amplifiers are, are gain matched cru exactly right. There it is, 85 volts on the money right there. That's what we want, YouTube, this. Well, look at the man himself, already getting ahead of the game. Disconnected the speaker wires for me. I'm gonna back these little worm nuts. I am swear, I'm addicted to that word now. We're gonna back these up a little bit so we can stick our connections onto her. All right, now that I'm thinking of it, man, I got a quick question for you. Yes. Are there, are there tweeters being ran off this? Uh, off of a component up front. Oh, okay, off a component. We're gonna do a couple different frequencies, 5,000, 3.5, and 1,000 hertz. Give her the full volume. Ramp her right up. Let's see here. 20 volts and the signal is beautifully clean. You have a good ear, my sir. Thank you have you. a good ear. We could probably crank that up a little bit more if you want to. Yeah. Go over to the potentiometers, the gain pots, and we're just gonna slowly bring her up until we can't do it anymore. You can see she's still, oh, oh, we're getting square. We're getting square. See that, guys? That is a great picture, perfect example of what we do not want. So let's bring her down a little bit. We don't even really want a soft clip on our vocals. That's really, I only do that for subwoofers. So dude, you had this perfect. You pretty much have it perfect. You the really, you could only realistically increase. I'm gonna bring it a volt higher. Wow. You had, your ear is pretty much on the money. Now that we know it's good on that one, we are gonna switch the song to 3.5 kilohertz and make sure we are still pretty clean. So this is pretty much where I have my tweeters start to taper off with their signal. Let's go ahead and turn that up. Oh goodness, I'm glad we checked this. I am definitely glad we checked this. Check that out guys. So now we're just gonna turn this down just a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong way. Turn her back down. All right, now let's go to a thousand hertz and make sure everything looks good with that as well. 1,000, looking good, absolutely perfect. We'll do a little live swap right over to the last one for this particular channel and make sure it's all matching. Hey, look at that, it's actually different. 18.6 and this one is 20 volts. Huh, let me make sure that's the right channel. Channels one and two. Huh, that's different, dude. And there's definitely nothing you can do about that back here. Channels one and two is all controlled on the same one. That's gotta be something with the amplifier because the channels one and two is controlled on the same gain. So it should be identical. Hmm. Yeah, that's really weird. Let's go ahead and go down to channels three and four, shall we? We are at 10 volts on that, so I think we can go up quite significantly on that one. All right, and we don't need to go any higher than 1000 hertz for this particular channel, so let's go ahead and go to our gains and adjust that. Start cranking that bitch up, and hopefully by now you're getting the gist of this whole process. Yes, I am, and I'm really enjoying learning. Nice, 20 Nothing volts. Better. Perfect, I think we're gonna go to 21 before it gets nasty like the other one. Let's go ahead and switch it over to the other side here. 23.4, so something's happening here. From this side of the amplifier to this side of the amplifier, you are universally just a little bit off. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That is very weird. You would think it might be from channels three and four to channels one and two that are, have disparity, but it's the ones within that same channel. I think it's about time we unplug these gators and replug your speakers. What do you say? That sounds like a fan. Hell yeah, man. Definitely wish I would've thought about room a little bit more with this. <laughs> I hear you, man. With the BC 3500s that were in Frankenstein, tuning those fucking things, Oh, oh, it was idea. so bad, dude. It actually went right down nice and clean. Good job on the build, dude. Thank you. Thank I, you very much. Yeah, it looks great. I'm so glad that you made it to Slamology, too. There was no missing that. That was the biggest and best show I've ever been to in my entire life. Oh, was, I heard it was the largest turnout for Slamology so far. Yep, I, I heard that, too. I got such a long demo, I might not even be able to put it in this video, because this video is going to be like fucking 15 minutes. Base amps are all plugged in. All right. Now it's just for that last mids and highs amplifier. What were you calling them? 
Worm nuts. Worm nuts. I yeah. Like I like them. I've always called them set screws. Yep. But after hearing that, there's no going back, dude. Jesse Hool okay. from New England, he said that in one of my videos, I was like, I am never calling it anything else. We'll probably get the placement of these all kind of messed up at first, but that's okay. Everything's getting replaced soon. Crescendo PWX 8s and 6.5s and hopefully some FT1s. Oh, dude, those tweeters scream, man. I heard Frankie over at Sanford last year. Sanford? And yeah, I fell in love with the Crescendo mids and highs there. Those sounded incredible. There we, are. there we go. So everything should be all wired back in, ready to go. So let's test it. It's definitely making noise. Hey, it's definitely changed from before. It sounds a little cleaner? Oh yeah. Yeah? That. And it wouldn't be complete if we really didn't take her out and jam on the base. So with that quick little teaser behind us, we're gonna go down the road and do this right. Just one little song. It sounds better? Yes. It sounds way better? better. Alright, let's go ahead and see how loud this fucking thing is. Big thumbs up though. It just turned on your airbag light? Oh god, dude. Yeah. Boom. That much. would suck. We got the SSA meter up on the dash, version one. Coming up here, we are ready to see what this bad boy's got in her. Hell yeah, dude. Wow. Dude, just from tuning, you gained a DB.1? Yep. 1.1 1 .1 decibels just from tuning and I have a feeling we could get a little bit more out of this just from moving a couple things and doing stuff Sometimes the smallest things make the biggest of differences. So there she is YouTube list can't get much better than that until the next video This is EXO and Steve signing out uh Woohoo!